Hi, this is Nick Caraz of Creative 111 here to talk to you about working with the mirror effect right inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. I use this effect all the time on nighttime imagery just to add a little bit of stylization to my clips and it's super easy to work with. Let's look how we can integrate it into our next project and the best ways of applying it to imagery right inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. Here inside my timeline, I'm already here in my effects workspace and under my effects tab, I will type in mirror. To see that it's saved under the distort category, I'll apply that mirror effect onto the first clip in my timeline. And with it selected, press shift five to bring up effect controls. Now the first thing I like to do is select the effect by its name. This one happens to have on-screen controls identified by a crosshair that you can easily start to drag to the center of your screen to see this mirror effect in action. Alternatively, you could play around with the reflection center and on the X axis, you divide the number in half to get the crosshair to the center of the image, which happens to be 2048 with this 4K footage in front of me of the city of Toronto. Once that's there, we can start to play with the reflection angle and with little to no effort by entering 90 degrees, we have a pretty awesome looking effect. Let's tweak this a little bit by playing with the reflection center and upping the Y value by dragging it down to the right. So I'm gonna settle on a value of 1260 and then press control tilde followed by home to play back what we have so far. Looking pretty Cool. Now, in further exploration with the mirror effect, sometimes it's really fun to double up on it. For instance, I'll take one version of the mirror effect and just repeat what I did in the last movie. I'll take the reflection center and actually take this number and divide it by half, which is gonna be 1920. And I'll change the reflection angle to 90. And I wanna just take this part and mirror it again. So. I will close out my first mirror effect, apply a second, and I'll select that mirror effect or type in 1920. Now these streets kind of look like an abstract butterfly, pretty cool. Applying that one more time, I'm gonna take one version of the mirror effect, apply a similar result here on the X axis and decide to play with the reflection angle to really see that I'm not getting what I'd like. In fact, I'd like to replicate the city here at the bottom. I'm really liking that imagery, so why not mirror it again? Applying the same technique, and I know that we're kind of in the matrix right now. The payoff will be well worth it. And sometimes when there's abstract patterns, you could try to apply another effect such as offset. I'll take this distortion effect, use it, and actually start to move this image a little bit on the Y axis. I see a little bit of a seam here of black across my image. I'm just gonna up, go to one of my mirrors and sort of try to see if I can zero that out a bit so it's almost seamless. It's got that sort of replicated pattern now in our imagery. Of course, you can take these effects and tweak them as you will on your imagery. Now let's head back to the Toronto image and try to immigrate some text into this imagery. I'm actually going to turn off my mirror effect temporarily. I'll simply select my text tool with me being at the beginning of my timeline. I'm going to type in the word Toronto. I will select my default selection tool and position the T so it's just at the top of the C in tower. And ideally what I want to do is have this T slightly obscured by the CN Tower as the footage moves. To easily do that, first of all, let me expand my text. Let me temporarily turn off the text. And I'm going to option click and make a duplicate copy of my nighttime skyline imagery. With that duplicate copy, there is a way for us to play with the opacity and mask a certain portion of our image. What I'm gonna do is zoom in on my image by going to a value of 100%, then select my hand tool from my toolbar and center the tower. I'll select the pen tool and then go back to my default selection tool where I'll start to draw 
around the tower. Now, sometimes when you're in very close proximity um, to the previous pen point that you've created, it can cause some problems. But keep in mind that this is also achievable in After Effects. And all the keyframes for the opacity value that we have here can be transferred over to After Effects and you don't have to repeat what you've already done inside of Premiere Pro with this specific effect. I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch this. So now I have my shape selected. I'm just adding a few extra points to make that shape better. And if you wanna see what's happening, let me just zoom out, turn off my V2 and V3 track and deselect the V3. You can sort of see I have part of the tower there. Turning back on the additional elements there in my timeline and fitting this to the view, selecting that above track here in the timeline, I'm gonna select that mask knowing that I'm on the first frame and start to track this forward is because we know this footage moves. And Premiere is gonna do a pretty good job of following this CN Tower, the top of the CN Tower's needle and tracking it throughout the scene. So taking a look at that, I'll temporarily turn off my V2 and V1 track again. And I will zoom in on my image, select that clip again and make sure the opacity is selected. And just so that you can sort of see the initial track can sort of see that it did a pretty great job across the CN Tower. There's a few frames that we can definitely tweak throughout this. So now we have a nice little bit of text behind the tower. If I go back to my first clip on V1 and turn it on, the mirror effect is now integrated. I can of course do a full screen playback and also play around with the feather to integrate this even more. So there are a few application uses of the mirror effect inside of Premiere Pro. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more tutorials like this. Leave a comment or a like. I'm Nick Karaz and I will see you next Monday on Creative 111's YouTube channel.